and thank you for being here today as I go through my series of lectures on multicultural communication. My name is Dr. Marquita Bird, and I'm called by my students uh, Dr. B. Uh, and I'm here to extend what I teach in my classes for 45 years into the general public. Uh, specifically one with the goal of helping us to understand our diverse society. And I think that if we understand it better, we understand the changes that are coming in the 21st century, we can reduce the fear about the changes and the differences. And that's very important. Multicultural communication is often hindered by fear that we have from what's different. Secondly, I, I'm hoping that we'll gain skills and knowledge that will facilitate our multicultural relationships uh, so that we can live uh, without less um, friction and facilitate ourselves and others in terms of developing their potential. Uh, so uh, this is a very important topic for me, and I think it's an important topic for America because we are in an upheaval about diversity in the United States and multicultural communication. So specifically today, this uh, talk is about diversity. And you may think, oh, we all know what that means. But it has very political tones uh, and uh, uh, it invokes uh, very uh, different images, different feelings uh, in the people who hear it. So let's talk about it. Diversity, actually, I call it the big D, the big D. And diversity is something that's a catch word for today. I went to a conference uh, with the National Council on Diversity uh, in San Francisco, talking to people about how we needed to advance diversity in America in particular areas. So the, I found the young people in the group thought about diversity in a very different way for me. They felt that diversity simply meant that they uh, would just work on their own and do whatever they wanted to, and they didn't really need to pay attention to that. I'm okay. Uh, I don't have to worry about anybody else. For people in my age bracket, diversity means we need for the various groups in the United States to be recognized and we need for uh, discrimination to be reduced. We need for everybody to be included. So very different interpretations of diversity among the millennials. And in fact, I found that sometimes it turns people off. Uh, so I'm hoping to uh, help us to understand it better. So when we talk about diversity, uh, some people uh, think about the good old days and, oh my gosh, America wasn't diverse. Uh, our community was, as Nixon said, pure. They talked about pure communities. That meant racially in intact communities. Uh, and people say, well, you know, let's go back to the good old days. We don't want diversity. We don't want neighbors to be different. And then there are others who interpret diverse, uh, diversity as meaning inclusion as uh, leaving out the old exclusionary policies. And in fact, I want to go with that definition, that diversity means inclusion. And when I say inclusion, I mean everybody, not just people of color, not just women, not just the poor. It means inclusion of all segments of American society. In fact, I found that one of the great ways of describing America is that it is a community of communities. And we need to make sure that every community is supported. So sometimes I know people of the dominant society, sometimes white males get scared when they hear diversity because they think it means that they're going to be excluded, which is not the case. Uh, it means that we're working for a fair society for all citizens. So don't be uh, uh, discouraged when you hear the word diversity. So let's talk about, in fact, uh, the fact that diversity is a past, present, and future characteristic, not only of the, the world, but also of the United States. It is a characteristic that is here now. It has been with us at the beginning, and it's going to continue. And so, again, just like I talk about multicultural communication, diversity is something that we need to come to understand. We'll start with the first point um, um, that I learned about. I went to a conference in Paris a few years ago at the UNESCO which is United Nations Educational Science uh, and Cultural Organization. At UNESCO, the topic was the governance and science of diversity. And so we spent three days talking about diversity. Uh, it simply means difference. It means variations 
among plants, variations among animals, variations in environments, uh, variations in habitats, variations in human beings. That's all it means. Diversity means variations uh, within a particular uh, group. Um, and I found, uh, which I, I knew some about, but I found, more, I found out more about it, that diversity uh, it, among plants, for example, uh, is something that's very important. Uh, and in fact, we have seed vaults that exist in two countries where the, the temperatures stay very, very low. And we're collecting seeds from all over the world of all plants. You may say, why? We're collecting those seeds because if there's ever a catastrophe and certain crops are wiped out or the environment changes and we can't grow apples where we used to grow apples, then if we have various seeds, uh, we could be able to replenish the, 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 uh, those crops. Very, very important. I found out, for example, that there used to be many variations, many varieties of apples, many varieties. And now we're narrowed down to a few Fuji, honey crisp, red, delicious, et cetera, and so forth. But there, there, there were many ver varieties. Um, roses. I've been looking at gardening shows from England and found out that we use different varieties of, of uh, roses depending on the age uh, that we've been in. So there's that variety keeps uh, a species strong. And we can go on to talk about human beings. Our DNA population uh, DNA uh, uh, grouping is very, very important in order to keep human beings, this, us, alive as a species. Uh, the less diversity we have in our DNA, the more likely that problems are to arise with genetic disorders, et cetera, and so forth. So uh, the more uh, genetic diversity in a population, the stronger the population is. If any disease wipes through, that means that we're li less likely for all of us to be wiped out. If we're all the same, we're more likely to be wiped out. Uh, so uh, that gives us an understanding of why diversity is important. Uh, we need to have it because it makes us stronger. Uh, there are some research investigations in terms of how women decide that somebody is attractive, a man is attractive. So they had different men scr scrub off all of their cologne, everything, and put on these clean T-shirts. Uh, they had the men wear them for so many hours, and then they took each T-shirt and put it in a box. Uh, the women couldn't, didn't know who they came from. They put a, a vent in there so the women could smell it. Uh, and so they would smell the boxes and report which, man, which box they felt they thought the man would be more important. What they found out was extremely interesting. Uh, they found out that women tend to find men who have the greatest DNA diversity from them as the most attractive. And this is something that's built into the species, that we're more attracted to people who have the greatest uh, diversity, uh, DNA diversity. Why? That makes us stronger. That makes us stronger set of population. As a population, I was very interested in that. So diversity is important. Diversity has advantages for survival, as I said, for our species. We get better ideas. We get more ideas. We have greater stamina, uh, less likely to become extinct. We talked about the advantages of uh, diversity, but there are also some disadvantages. We, of course, we know we may experience more conflict. We may have greater effort to sustain our community. So it may take a little bit more work. Now, the second idea that I want you to keep in mind is that uh, diversities and similarities among human beings are indicated by demographics uh, in our country. Uh, we label people for counting purposes, uh, and we talk about that as diversity. For example, uh, we use labels to describe our population, such as gender, race, class, age, ability, religion. Uh, those are basic categories. We can have other labels, such as level of education, uh, language spoken. Uh, we could talk about rural and urban, uh, size of household, uh, those sorts of things, which are always also ways that we can uh, label people. So th that has to do with diversity. Um, and, and so uh, we do label them uh, for counting purposes, actually, uh, because we allot money in the federal government based on uh, what we see from our census. Lastly, uh, we'll just talk about some myths about diversity that can cause us not to appreciate it and not to work to sustain it. And that is that 
We, uh, some believe that diversity means that we're going to try to replace some people, uh, which nobody, we know that no one can be replaced. Diversity means exclusion. Um, uh, a third thing is that uh, when you have diversity in the workforce, that it means that you have to uh, hire a person, a minority person who's unqualified, which is not the case. Diversity in the workforce simply means that you make sure that the pool is balanced with every ethnicity, every uh, gender, et cetera, and so forth. That's all that it means, that you balance the applicant pool. It doesn't mean you have to hire anybody unqualified. And I might point out that when we use the term unqualified, uh, we've only seen that in uh, application to a minority people. We used to see job applications that said uh, we're looking for only qualified minorities. But we've never heard a job, a job application advertised for qualified whites. So that means that we, we expect white people to be uh, qualified, but not people of color. Those are myths. Uh, and of course, we have some notion that diversity is something new, which it is not new. Now, uh, it's increasing. Uh, as I mentioned this in one of my earlier shows, uh, diversity is increasing. I mentioned before that it's browning. We have more people of color. It's graying. We have more elder, like myself, seniors. It's becoming feminized. And when I say feminized, that means that the notion of feminine perspective is taking more precedence in the, in the nation as opposed to masculinity. And we see that going on. The nation is changing because we're more wired. And that means that we're tied into technology. And we know that why, why do I say it's more diversity? Because there are haves and have-nots. Some people have access to all the technology, like myself. And then there are other people who don't have access. We assume that all students have access to a computer. That's not true. We have, I have students come to my university who don't have computers, who don't have smartphones, yet they're expected to have this equipment. We even have a divide in terms of uh, access to technology. And that's what the net neutrality law was about. If you don't have net neutrality, then the people who have money can get large amounts of data into cyberspace. But people who don't have a lot of money, uh, their usage is going to be slowed down or they'll have to pay more money. That's an inequity. And that's why the net neutral uh, uh, law is very, very important. Lastly, we see a democratization of sources of information. There used to be a time when the person who could get published, what got published was determined by the publishers and they were all owned by primarily males of the dominant society. And so we had a narrow channel for information to get out to the public. Now, because of the use of technology, everybody can get their ideas out there. Uh, anybody can get a show on YouTube. Here I am making a show on YouTube and talking about multicultural communication. There's a democratization of information, which is extremely important for us to have a healthy democracy. Last thing, we need to remember in terms of diversity that everything changes. Nothing stays the same. If we stay the same as a country, then we are stagnant. And anything that's stagnant is dying. You know about stagnant water. You can't drink it. Uh, so we don't want things stagnant. We want to keep moving and pro progressing. We want to be dynamic. Many resist uh, having diversity in a country because they're afraid of it. Uh, it's ambiguous. Like, I look at you and I don't know who you are. Uh, we cannot predict it. And it takes work to deal with it. But those are the things we need to be working on is working. So effective communication depends on us being open to diversity, lacking fear of differences. It means that we accept human beings conditionally. Uh, we feel comfortable with change. And we need to uh, understand that we want to maximize our benefits. I encourage you to come to know yourself. You're not afraid of somebody who's different if you know who you are. If you're not sure of who you are, then you're uh, intimidated by people who are different. I like to say that life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. We see that throughout the universe. Don't resist the changes. That only creates sorrow. Uh, let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever uh, they are and whatever they appear to be. And that is a, a, a phrase from Lao Tzu who was uh, a very important philosopher in Asia. I want to 
end the program today by saying that I hope you will uh, start learning about diversity. Start by learning about who you are and uh, your identity and where your people come from. I'm hoping that you will accept it better. And I hope that you'll come back to see another episode on multicultural communication. I'm, go I'm going to say that uh, it's time out now. And I'm going to leave you with the words of Mr. Spock. Live long and prosper.